Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is the Prime Minister of Iceland, Katrin Jakobsdottir. She joins us from Reykjavik. Mrs. Prime Minister, thank you very much for being with us today. Very happy to be with you. Mrs. Prime Minister, Iceland has uh, 1,792 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 10 deaths. So it means both an infection rate and a mortality rate of less than 0.5%. Before we get to how you've reached that result, I want to ask you a very simple question. Do you consider that in your country, the pandemic is fully under control? Um, I would say that the pandemic is not over, but we have it uh, under a relatively good control. Um, we have from the beginning uh, in February taken just over 46,000 tests and we have used the method of tracing infections. So new infections now are very few. They have been from zero up to two in the last few days. So yes, I think we are gaining control over the pandemic, but obviously there have been uh, strong social restrictions. Uh, we are planning to open up again lifting the first restrictions next week and then we will follow the procedure very closely what will happen right uh, so going back to uh, the method there's been no lockdown uh, schools and shops have been open uh, the air travel uh, is still up and uh, running but no other country in the world has tested as extensively you just mentioned this figure of over 46 thousand people have been tested this is uh, some 12 percent of uh, your population uh, compared to let's say Germany uh, which has been heralded as an example of mass testing it's only two percent of the population why did you decide to do this from the very beginning well Iceland the Icelandic population is around 360,000 so yes 46,000 just over 46,000 people have been tested and uh, this has both been done to people with symptoms, but also with the general public. And it has been done in cooperation. Uh, the public health authorities on one side and then uh, a company uh, called Deco Genetics that have been actually collaborating on this extensive testing. Um, this was decided early in the beginning uh, to start this collaboration. And uh, this has given us uh, really a very, because we are on an island, uh, you mentioned air travel. Obviously, air travel to and from the country is very limited. We are the outer border of the Schengen area with, uh, in Europe, so air travel has been limited. So we have been very much focusing on containing the virus and reaching and it's aiming for elimination here in Iceland. Right. Uh, and this was actually part of the plan, really, from the beginning. To right. Test from, the law. From, from the beginning, there has been uh, this cooperation between uh, the public health authorities and the private sector, as you just mentioned. Uh, how many tests are you planning uh, to conduct? Are you because you uh, have tested people with symptoms, but also without uh, symptoms, which hasn't been the case in most mm -hmm. of the countries? Well, yes, we have done a lot of tests and then we have done a lot of tracing so most of the people actually who are uh, being analyzed with COVID uh, they are already quarantined when they are analyzed because we trace the infections around and con contact everybody who has been in contact with infected persons uh, what we plan to do are hoping to be able to do in the next few weeks is to have a, a large-scale testing on if the population has developed an antibiotic in their blood against the COVID. Um, this might happen in, in the month of May, and then we would like to do a large-scale testing on that. Uh, but then we will just see what happens uh, as the weeks go by, because it's very difficult to predict the development of the virus, obviously. Right. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, contact uh, tracing. This has also been uh, a key. Obviously, it's easier to do uh, when you have a small uh, population and you're on an island. Uh, but uh, you've done this partly through an application on a smartphone. Has this been uh, efficient? 
And have there been some privacy issues there? There's a debate in many mm. countries, including here in France, about how much uh, privacy uh, do you prey on uh, by tracing everyone and its contacts? Yes, obviously there are benefits in being an island and being a small population. So it's relatively a lot easier uh, to trace people who have been come in contact with infected persons. I think we have about 93% success rate uh, when it comes to that. Uh, and then we have been using quarantine and actually around 18,800 people have finished quarantine in Iceland, which is quite a large chunk of the population. We still have uh, around 700 people in quarantine. Um, the tracing app is uh, something that we designed. Uh, obviously, there was a discussion about the privacy issues. Uh, and this is not an obligational app. This is something that you can just choose to use. Uh, quite a lot of people have decided to download that app and use it. Uh, it is uh, strictly... Uh, under the, it's under a strict supervision of the person, Institute for Personal Privacy and uh, the information that it are gathered there are not to be used, are to be uh, really destroyed after a certain amount of time and are not to be used for any other uh, purpose than tracing infections. But it's a very, it's a very, obviously it's something that needs to be discussed in society and it was discussed and it's not obligational. Right. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, that there would be a lessening of uh, the restrictions on May 4th, or for instance, the public gathering, which were limited to 20 people uh, until now, uh, now will be up to 50 people. Uh, preschools, uh, grade schools would operate as uh, usual. Are you confident uh, that uh, this will not uh, create a second wave of uh, the virus infection. Uh, for instance, uh, you had not quarantined people coming into Iceland, and you've decided a few days ago that there would be a two-week quarantine for the people coming in. So it shows that you are still concerned about a potential second wave, as it's known. Well, obviously, we, there is still so much that we do not really know about this virus, and we need to take every precaution. We're lifting restrictions, as you mentioned, uh, on the 4th of May. Then preschools and, uh, and primary schools will go back to normal operation. They have been operating, though, uh, because we have tried to follow strict, uh, uh, strict regulations really coming from the World Health Organization in testing, tracing, using quarantine and isolation. But we have tried to keep the society going and hopefully this will also help us to restart the society uh, more. We are now, yes, we have a quarantine plan for two weeks for everybody who comes to Iceland and we will revise that decision on the 15th of May and we will see how it's developing. And uh, we will obviously follow the pr process of the virus very closely after the restrictions are lifted on 4th of May. If it will go up again, uh, we might have to have more restrictions again. Again. Uh, you might have uh, noticed that uh, from Germany to Taiwan to New Zealand to Northern Europe, uh, women leaders have been hailed as doing actually a better job at handling the uh, pandemic than their masculine counterparts. Uh, do you share that as assessment? And if so, how do you explain it? Well, you can find examples of male leaders uh, who are doing a good job. I think what we see here in this pandemic is that leaders who uh, follow the advice of scientists and uh, take transparent decisions uh, in, uh, really about what measures to be ta taken because of the pandemic, they are doing well. I think it's very important in a pandemic like this that we are a open in Iceland, we are an open liberal democracy and follow those rules. We are not just fighting the virus, we're also following the rules of democracy and, and try, we have tried to keep everything we are doing as transparent as possible. So what has happened here is really that the people themselves have taken a lot of responsibility in containing the virus. We don't have the police on the streets following that we are seeing after that we are all following the rules. It's people themselves who are really doing this because we are all part of the solution, really.
Right. Uh, just a last question, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. You're the leader of a left green uh, party. Uh, climate change has been a priority of yours. Are you concerned that because of the pandemic, uh, this agenda will be uh, pushed back in your country and in other countries as well? Well, in Iceland, uh, we will continue what we have been doing when it comes to climate change. We are aiming for uh, carbon neutrality in 2040 and also aiming to fulfill our obligations uh, in the Paris Agreement uh, by 2013. So we are just moving on as before, but obviously uh, happenings like this pandemic can affect what will happen in the world and we're already seeing that in international cooperation. It's, it's placing, a, it's a creating a strain really in international cooperation. But I firmly believe that uh, the climate change issue will come back as a, our core priority uh, in Europe and the rest of the world when we have finished this pandemic. Catherine Jakobs Dotur, uh, Prime Minister of Iceland, thank you very much uh, for being with us from Reykjavik and thank you for watching this interview here on France 24.